everyone. How are you? How are you? How are you? How is everyone? Hi, Angela. Hi, Malia. Hi, Linda. How are you guys? So I am good. How is everyone? So happy to see you guys all here. How is everyone doing? So I'm going to make some How is everyone? So happy to see you guys all here. How is everyone? <laughs> Hi, Joni. Hi, Shelly. Sorry. You know, I've been trying to mess with the uh, volume of my computer. So I'm going to make some more painting papers. I've been using them in this project I'm doing. And I'm excited about the project. It has been a lot of fun, but you never have too many painting papers. You're too glad to see. I'm glad to see you guys, too. So how, what is going on? Hey, Linda Mo. I've been working on this project and I'm really loving it and hopefully I'll have a, a video up. I've been having, you know, live streaming is not the same as doing videos and editing them. And because I haven't, I'm just, guys, I have not been doing, I haven't been doing my regular videos. I've been just live streaming and so I'm a little rusty. So I'm going to make a bunch of painted papers. I think I'm going to make them out of magazines. I'm, I'm really liking that I ordered one of these Restoration Hardware um, catalogs. Actually, I got a bunch. And some of them are better than others, but the pages are great for painting papers. What did you start a couple of hours ago? <coughs> <coughs> Got my beverage of choice. Got my root beer. Malia said she bought a no-name spirograph. Ooh, good for you. It's supposed to freeze in the Black Hills. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. All you lurkers say hey. All you lurkers say hey. So I'm going to make some painting papers. I've got a bunch of projects. I'm actually making some Christmas ornaments out of painting papers. So this was the new restoration hardware that I got in the mail today. And it may have some stuff I want to cut out of it. But for the most part, I don't know. The, they're pretty big catalogs and you get a lot of pages and it's free. Hi, Kay. Hi, Cassandra. So I haven't started my Christmas stuff yet. I'm definitely it's on my list. I have, um, guys, I'm so behind. I am so behind. I'm not, you know, taking a little bit of time off of YouTube. Taking a little bit of time off of YouTube. It was not, I mean, it was good for me, but not for me keeping up. It's already snowing. Hi, Mom Munson. How are you? Oh, you guys, I don't envy you. So order these Restoration Harbor catalogs. Um, I got several different ones, but the pages are excellent to do painting papers. And Miss Linda McCollum, she loves her magazine painting papers. You don't think it at the time, but they, the texture of them is so, I think it comes out so good. What do you think, Miss Linda Mack? And these are extra big ones, so... You have a lot to work with. So I'm going to work, work on some painting papers. And then I should have a video up in a couple of days um, with a project that I've been working on that I've used a lot of those painting papers in. And I don't know. It's been, it's been fun. Hi, Julia. I appreciate the thumbs up. You know what? The thumbs up or the thumbs down. It doesn't even matter. YouTube just looks at it the same. It doesn't matter if you if it's positive or negative. How many of you guys have been seeing some odd algorithm YouTube algorithms where you're not getting the uh, where you're not getting your notifications? I'm just gonna take a bunch of pages out because I'm gonna. This is actually a really good magazine. Pages come out so easy. Got a really thick cover. 
Yeah, they're thin for collage. What it, Linda's saying she likes magazine pages because they're thin for collage. And yes, I did see the painting paper video that you put up in our group. And for those of you that haven't joined our Facebook group, it's called Crafting Mamas over on Facebook. And you're welcome to join. Some of them I may use for collage, like these pattern things I like for collage. But some of the, you know, I kind of hoped that the restoration hardware ones would have <coughs> lots of pictures of chairs. Well, they do, but they're really large pictures of chairs. And for what I wanted to do with them, you know, it's like one of those things. So, so some of them I'll keep for collage and some of them I'm going to paint. But I think I'm just going to get some, tear some out. Hi, Kay. Yes, I ordered the magazines online. You go to restorationhardware.com and you order the magazines online. Um, they ask if you want an online version or a hard copy. Oh, I said a hard copy. I didn't even... I think they call it a print copy. Yeah, they're free. They're online. Not that any of us need any more magazines. How many of us have like an overabundance of magazines? But I kind of wanted them for the chairs because I've been cutting out lots of chairs. And I thought they would be good for chairs, which they are, but they're just a little big. All right, so this is what I'm going to paint right now. And I still have not located my black. You guys know how much I love my black, my black paint, my black, um, what do you want to call it? Um, chalkboard paint. I love the black chalkboard paint. I have no idea. You guys, I have two huge jars of it, and I've had it for years. And when I packed up my craft room, when my kids, because for those of you that don't know, I live in Hawaii. I've got a couple of grown children. I've got five children total. Three I gave birth to. Two came with my partner. <laughs> two came with my hottie. And, um, Four of our five children are grown, one, and one's young, one's 12. But I, we live in a small house. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? We live in a small house, so when they all come home, we kind of have to make do, and we're using my what was my dining alcove, which is our crap, my craft room, as one of our makeshift bedrooms for my older daughter and her husband who are here for a while. And uh, so you guys are forced to be in my bedroom, which is fine, except that I put most of my, put a lot of my stuff in storage. So I think I must have just put that black paint in storage, just thinking that, oh, what am I going to be painting, right? So tell me what you guys are up to. So anyway, I didn't, what I'm going to make, I'll show you guys. Uh, I should have a video up in a day or so of, and these are, actually, these are old laundry room cards from when my daughter was living in an apartment building in Chicago. She saved them for me, <laughs> my oldest daughter. So that's what I'm using. But you can use any gift card, credit card. I find it's better because you can do multiple layers and... spreads it super thin and then you can stencil and spray on top or whatever anyway what I'm making some Christmas ornaments out of my painting papers and I'll show you I'll share that with you guys I don't know if I'll share it with you this week or next week and I've been working on a couple of other projects with my painting papers too and I'm still going to, I'm still doing some Christmas gifts. I just haven't, it hasn't been on my, hasn't been in the forefront of my, on my to-do list. It's on my to-do list, but not, I've had other things come up. What are you guys working on? What are you working on? 
what is, Linda's asking me, what is my favorite size of little book covers? You mean my mini books or you mean like regular books? Like, but you mean the mini books that I made or the, or like junk journal or books that I'm making junk journals out of? I did go, um, and you know, I have really not gotten many supplies. I've been, been really good about like not getting anything, but I did take a bunch of magazines, both my little mini books. Hmm, let me see if I have them close by. I moved them all off. I think I like the ones that are like two and a half by <clears throat> the bigger ones. So like they're like two and a half by two and a half or two and a half by three. I like those. And the favorite book size cover that I make a lot of my junk journals out of are five by seven. Because I find that I can find a lot of five by seven books and I don't like them. But you know what? Use what you have. I did get a really big one the other day that I thought I would make myself a coffee table book out of. Like, because how many of you guys just make art and you either give it away or maybe some of you have Etsy shops and you, you know, you add little pieces and bits to your Etsy shop. Well, you guys, I have given away probably probably more things that I've made you know it's like I don't keep very much for myself so I decided that I'm gonna make myself my own coffee table book out of some of my own artwork and instead of just constantly sending it away so I found a really big book cover the other day and I just gutted the book and it's quite large um I just gutted the book I can't even remember the subject matter of the book but I just gutted it and I'm gonna I'm going to make, I don't know what I'm going to do on the cover, but um, I'm going to start saving just like little bits and pieces of stuff that I make um, and put it in there. I did, I went and I took a bunch of the magazines that I'm not going to use. Like I, like all the rest of you, I've gone to Recycle Bank and I'm getting my free magazines, right? How many of you guys went to Recycle Bank and you're getting your free magazines? Well, a lot of us are doing that. And so many of the fashion ads, because most of the Recycle Bank magazines are from Hearst Publishing. And um, most of the ads are sort of the same. And that's generally what you, at least for me, what I use in my collage bits that I'm copying up. A coffee table book is great. Well, you know, I, Linda, I haven't saved enough of my stuff. It's like, one of my kids was like, remember that? And then we found some pictures of some artwork that I was working on. And, you know, I just don't keep enough of it. And I think, you know, they all think I'm pretty ridiculous. But I think in the years to come, they'll they'll appreciate it. Maybe some of them will, will want some of it. I mean, you know, maybe it'll inspire them. You know, my mom was an amazing artist. She made all kinds of art. And um, you guys know she was a dancer, and so she was an artist of all sorts. But she also was an amazing portrait painter. And when I was a kid growing up, she would she would just paint and paint and paint sometimes. Especially, it was really what was quite remarkable about my mother is that she painted generally when we would have something tragic happen, like like when someone would die or. Um, I don't know, like when we would have hurricanes and things like that. I think it was a stress reliever for her. So, and I wish now that I had some of those things that she painted because, you know, you move and you never take, you never think your art's anything any well any good anyway. Hi, Diana. Well, most of us don't. Most of us are like, yeah, it's just art. I'll make it again. You do a lot of things in hopes that your girls will enjoy them. Somebody that's awesome. Publishers are asking you to pay for magazines. In what way, Cassandra? I mean, most of the Recycle Bank magazines that you're getting are for one year and two year subscriptions. I think you probably could go on and renew them. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, because I don't even read the magazines that I get. I just cut them up for collage stuff. I mean, sometimes I do. I got a good good housekeeping one the other day and I read it. It was actually great. It had Jamie Lee Curtis on it and 
She said some really inspiring things. I really enjoyed the articles that I, that she was on. Um, I got an Oprah magazine recently, and that's in my pile. I do have a pile of a few things to to read, but for the most part, I don't even read them. Hi, Adiel. How are you? Welcome, welcome. And if I haven't said how do you guys talk, chat me in all caps. And I missed Carla today. How many of you guys were over at Carla Cage Fish today? I missed it. It was like, we, did I tell you guys? I know I must have told you the ridiculousness about, you know, how everything grows crazily around me. Like, and um, I think it's the energy work that I do on a regular basis. And like what I work with you guys on, I do every day. And our landlord was like, you guys need to cut your yard. You guys, we cut our yard so much. So my hottie and I spent the past few days like just trimming our yard back. And I think he took, because it looks like a jungle. He took, I think he did... I didn't count four truckloads, I think, four dump truck, I mean, um, pickup truckloads full of, and it's not even, it's not even all of it. So, so this morning was the, the time that I was like, we had a friend with a big truck that we were just like piling it in the back of his truck and um, with big tarps and so I missed Carla. I'm sure she did something fabulous. And I know you guys don't think these look like much now because I'm just putting a base coat, but they will. Hi, Ash. Oh, we're happy to see you, Mama. I hope you feel better. So anyway, I want to talk to you guys about the Christmas swap. So, you know, last year we did a whole Christmas swap. And I'm thinking about doing it this year in our group, in our Crafting Mamas group. But what I'm thinking about doing, and I, I'll give you the exact guidelines after I make one. I'll make one example myself. Is I'm thinking that we'll do like an envelope, like a business size envelope, a 49 cent envelope. Hi, Patricia. Or a one stamp envelope. So if somebody lives in Canada, it's one stamp. Um, and we'll fill it with what I'm thinking is ATC size stuff. Like maybe, maybe a couple of playing cards, maybe some painty papers, and some just cool magazine bits and pieces or bits and pieces from your stash um, that will fit in there with a little personal note. You know, not to exceed the the 49 cents or the one stamp. So if it's a if you live in Canada or you live in England or Scotland, you can participate and people will participate with you. And for those that are in the U.S., I think a, a, an international stamp is I think a dollar ten. Is it a dollar ten or a dollar twenty? And we will send each other whatever we can fit in that, that envelope. So if you guys are interested in joining us, it's really just more of a remembrance. It's more, it's not to pit anybody. Hi, Liz. Um, it's not to pit, give anybody any, hey, Susie. Um, it's not to put anybody, any financial burden on anyone, but it's just like a thought. And I, you know, like, and depending upon how many people sign up, you know, we may be able to do, like, if if 20 people sign up, then maybe we, we can each do four or five, you know, because it's only one stamp, right? And you're just going to send, and it won't be secret, so you'll know who has you, and, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to work on that video this week, and it's just more of a thought, pro you know, like a thought. And you could do it holiday themed or solstice themed, or you could do it no theme. You could do it 
you know, crafting themed with a little note that just wishes you a happy new year. Hi, Dania. Hi, Kay. Yeah, it's, it's not, to, it's just really meant to be fun. And it's really meant to include everybody because, you know, we do. Crafting Mamas, we have lots of people that are not just from the U.S. So sometimes when we do those big swaps where it's like seven or eight dollars in the U.S., I, I know that I sent mine to South Africa last year and it cost me like forty dollars. <laughs> to send mine and so and it was just the it wasn't even a lot it wasn't even a heavy duty so that's why I'm thinking the one stamp it's either you know if you if somebody's from Canada then you're gonna spend the dollar ten on the stamp and if somebody's from the US you're spending 49 cents on the stamp so that's what I'm thinking yeah I don't think it'll be a secret Linda I think it's better I think it's just more like or maybe I'll figure out a secret element to it, meaning like, you know, you sign up for four people and I don't know. I have to figure out the parameters of it. I just don't, you know, I think sometimes people need to be held accountable. It's like last year, I think um, pretty much everybody got stuff, but a couple of people, um, a couple of people, you know, signed up and, and then they they sent theirs out, but they didn't get one, and that became so. I don't know. I'm just thinking that I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out the thing. I don't think the secret so much as fun as it is. Is it? Well, maybe you won't. Maybe you know everybody will. I don't know. Depending upon how many people sign up, if like only 20 people. Yeah, that way everybody can get something, right? Because I think last year what happened was it's like I don't know. Like, I think the woman that I sent to would have liked it. She had two people, but I think she probably would have loved, everybody probably would have loved to have sent her something, and if it and it would have only cost a dollar ten, whereas it cost me $40, $40 to send her what I sent. My, I think it was even more than that, guys. It was ridiculous. But anyway, so that's my thought. It's just going to be what fits inside a business-size envelope, you know, a regular bill-size envelope, and, and I'll put a parameter, something like two playing cards or two, two and a half ATC size backgrounds. You know, I'll, I'll figure out something so where it's really fun, you know, and, you know, some of your painting papers and, you know, that sort of thing. It's not meant to be, it's just meant to be a remembrance. Just maybe like a little note. You know, Angela, unfortunately, that happens sometimes. I mean, that's happened to me. I've, for the most part, I usually get stuff back, but it's happened to me. So generally, when I do swaps with people, and if I don't get anything back, I really stuff comes up. You know, sometimes I think even in the best of intentions, people sign up, and then you know, they have some sort of financial hardship or some medical issue or something, and then people feel embarrassed, and it's not meant to be like that. So the only reason why I'm painting all these beige is because they are magazine pages. I'm going to add other layers, but I figure I'll do all the beige, all the off-white cheap craft paint first, and then I'll add others. I'll add others. Hi, Kathy. How did you? How was your cruise? Yeah, like stuff you put in a rack, like stuff you already have. You know, like you don't have to like do anything extra special. I mean, the note will be what's special. You know. Just like, so that they know it's from you, like, you know, whatever. You know, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out and I'll, and I'll do a video on it and everybody can see what's entailed and, you know. I know a ton of people liked the Christmas card part last year, but I know that some people felt like they, you know, some people don't celebrate Christmas. And so then it puts it sort of like, so I think this way, it's sort of like a fun art supply, have fun thing. I like notes from my crafty friends too. Kathy, how was your cruise? Did you get a bunch of, of uh, cool collage fodder from your cruise? Bet you did.
I hear you, Ash. Health stuff does come up. How many of you guys have been having a hard week? I can tell you emotionally, I've had sort of a, a more sensitive week. I feel like I'm more like vulnerable week. Does that make sense? You know, like where you, sit, where you like tend to be more vulnerable. Oh, you're not leaving until the 19th. Why did I think it was before then? See, Kathy, I'm already, I'm already like excited for your cruise. I'm, ar I'm already going vicariously with you. That you're gonna have so much fun. So much fun. So much fun. You are going to really love it. <laughs> We're all going on Kathy's cruise with her. Oh, you're so sweet, Kathy. You're going to have such a good time. So, yes, Julia, those not on Facebook can totally do it too. What we'll do is, um, if you decide to do it, you'll send me the, your name and your address and everything, and then I'll sit, put it on a list and then send it, um, send you the names and addresses of those people that are not in it. So if you guys are not in Facebook, which many people don't like it, and I don't blame you, lately there's been like some, just some ugliness on there, you know, I try to, <laughs> I try not to see all that if I can help it. Um, just email me. I think it's at craftingmamasinfo at gmail.com. Hi, Gail. Gail, none of our notifications are working. I normally get, like, hi, Sherry. I usually get, um, I usually get notifications for channels that I don't watch all the time. It's weird. <laughs> so it's like, and the ones I watch all the time, I don't always get. We have a Cherie and a Sherry. And we may have more than one Sherry. Oh, it's okay. Hi, Roy. Have you guys all say everybody say hi to Booty Sweetheart? His name is Roy. And you guys go over and show him some love. He is doing, he does quilting. He's, a, he's actually a very good quilter. And he does, I loved your button. Your button charms, those were really great, Roy. We're happy to have you here. So, so I'll figure out the Christmas thing. And what we'll do is we'll put like a deadline of like, you know, once I figure it out, we'll, we'll put a deadline where everybody gets it before Christmas. You know, like, we'll do it and it give everybody a plenty of time and it won't be anything difficult. It'll be like what you send in a rack or what you send in some sort of happy mail, you know, and I mean, the, hand, the handmade component can be like a few of their little painty papers and maybe some and your handmade note, handwritten card, or whatever, handmade note, whatever you write. I liked Roy's button tassels too. They were awesome. I haven't made any though, but I will. I have plenty of buttons. How many of you guys have tons of buttons? That looks like a really fun, a really fun thing to make. So I think I, I've, I've been working on this project and I think I need, I don't know how many painting papers, but I, I need a lot more than I've made. And then I also like want to send some to one of my favorite YouTube artists who, who's, who made a comment in one of my live streams that she, <laughs> she likes my painting papers better than hers and she always sends me stuff. I don't 
She sends me stuff all the time, and I never, I haven't been able to send anything back. I've just been in my own thing, you guys. Just been in my own world. You're going to make some too, Addie Doll? Yeah, they look awesome. They are cute as a button, Angela. You're crazy. You're absolutely right. So how many of you guys were having that similar week, the week of feeling just, just a little bit more vulnerable? And I have to say, the, the general feeling of some of the things on Facebook have not been good. Like, people are just really mean to each other, and that part doesn't make me feel good either. It makes me feel like, what in the world are we doing? Okay, so I have, like, two more things in white to do. This is my base coat, and then I can start the fun part. So somebody messaged me and asked me what kind of paint. Okay, this is the cheapest paint that you can buy at a big box store. It's made by Plaid, and it's Apple Barrel brand, and I buy the flat paint. And I'll tell you why, because the glossy paint is, is not opaque. And I like, when I'm making my painting papers, I like, I figure I can always add the shine or the gloss later, but I like it better to layer the flat. But you pick, they have semi-gloss, gloss, and flat. I go for the flat. It's like 48 cents a bottle. You don't look at your Facebook feed, you only go to your groups. I hear you. You got a job offer? Oh my gosh. Congratulations, Angela. That's awesome. Life is scrambled. I hear you, girl. I'm telling you. I have a really, really, really dear friend who, um, who's just going through a lot of really tumultuous things and I was talking to her the other day, and so we were talking about these mutual friends of ours that are just not being nice to her, and it's for not for anybody. I mean, it's none of their, like, nothing's going on with them. It's just, just no empathy, you know, no compassion. And we are just talking about how all of that really takes very little effort, and, you know, you don't realize it until, um, you don't have to go out of your way to be mean to people. And if you don't want to respond, then that's just better to not say anything, right, than to be not nice so we've been talking about how how people just are, are conveniently nice when they want to be and not so nice most of the other time when you're going through stuff that may they may think they're going to get yeah you know what Malia I say unfriend them I say people take liberties on social media that they would never do in person. They would never say those unkind things to your face. And if they did, you wouldn't you wouldn't be friends with them. So I say unfriend them. Let them ask you why. Or maybe they won't even notice. And if they ask you why, you can simply say, because I need positivity in my life. I don't need this. You're entitled to your opinion, but I didn't ask for it. So, I read a quote, a quote today. Bootsy said, I, had, I, read a, I read a quote today that says, a real friend is someone who stabs you in the front. Oh, good quote, Bootsy. Love and compassion, you guys. Love and compassion. That's where I'm at. You know, it's like, I don't have time. So, I have a friend that went to her 30th high school reunion. I think it was 30 and we talked a lot before she went she was so excited right because we all went to school together but none of us lived there anymore and so she was very excited she was gonna go see one of my relatives and it was like we were all I was really super excited for her and um, she had the instead of it and she was so looking forward to it like so looking forward to it and instead of it being a really good experience some girl that she had had an altercation with 30 years ago or more came up to her and said something just so horrible and just was mean and incited all these people to be just horrible to her. And I just thought to myself, you know what, 30 years ago, that's a long time. Also, we were teenagers 30 years ago. And I said, I was there and I don't remember that same thing happening. But what it just showed me is that some of us 
live our lives in the moment, right? And some of us hold on to grudges and to things, and they probably aren't even, you know, it's like the game of telephone. None of it is real, you know? It's like you think you remember one thing, but if you could stand back and really look at yourself, right, you would see it probably wasn't that at all. And so she was so devastated by it all because she was so looking forward to it. And she traveled from far away to be there and just the ugliness of everyone. And I said, well, it shows you a couple things. It shows you why you left because some of us feel like, you know, we're not sure why we left. But most, most of us outgrow that energy, you know. And I said, it also shows you that you don't have to. Like, that's not a, just because you can be mean doesn't mean you have to take it. Okay, so I have got, so I, so Malia, my only thing to you, girl, is I'd be like, thinking of that song, that Nancy Sinatra song, these boots are made for walking, right? I'm using my jelly plate. You don't need a jelly plate, but I'm using mine, okay? And I put too much paint on this, but that's okay, because with painting papers, you never can have too much paint. You can never have too much paint. And usually I brayer it out, but I'm, I scraped it out. I don't even know where my brayer is. It's got to be close by. I don't say things online that I wouldn't say to somebody's face either, Malia. I really don't understand what gets into people. You know what's remarkable though is that people do have do say things and then you go back years later and they wonder why bad stuff happens to them. I wonder why like <laughs> why the law of cause and effect is working on them. I'm sorry you've had that experience. Let me see if I can find my brayer. Yeah, I wouldn't say anything to anybody. I don't say anything to anybody that I don't, I wouldn't say to their face either. I don't go that way. Did you, you want to use my phone? Oh, you know what you need? You gotta go and call. Mm -hmm. Go in your right place and shut the door. Sorry, you guys. My littlest one came home and she always wants to use my phone, which is fine because her friends want to call on my phone. Hi, Miss Aussie Mom. <coughs> That's a good point. Angela says her thing is don't say anything you wouldn't sign your name to. I know. Can you imagine holding on to something for 30 years? You guys, I can't even remember 30 years ago. I mean, and, and I definitely don't remember with any clarity. I've lived my life. I mean, and that's what my friend said. My friend said, you know what I said in response to all this? She said, I said, you know, I've lived my life. I've had real issues, you know, you know, the loss of your parents, um, you know, just breast cancer, all kinds of things my friends had, you know? And she said, you know, I was so looking forward to it. I said, well, it doesn't mean you can't look forward to it. She goes, no, but it made her, it made her realize that maybe what she was looking for. Kevin <laughs> says he can't remember yesterday. Oh my gosh. That's like a good reminder. Gail says that she keeps reminding herself to think before she says or writes anything. Sherry sure says, I'd rather look at the happy and positive side of anything bad that happened to me and, and chalk it up to a lesson in life. Yes, I know. Great. Hi, Fee Luke. I agree with you. I'm in total agreement with you. You know, <clears throat> but I guess not everybody looks like that, you know, and that's fine. I mean, we all have our own thing, but I just, you know, I felt a little bad for her because she was so, 
you know, haven't you ever like seen somebody who's like so excited about an experience that they're going to have and you're excited for them. And then when it ends up being like less than what you would hope for them or even for yourself, you're just like, Oh no, you know, So how many of you guys did Carla Cage Fish today? I really wished I had. I, I'm going to try to be there um, next week. I, I didn't know that we were going to the to the green dump today, but once that we did. And it was good, you guys. And we still have to go. I think we have to go again tomorrow. We took as, as much as we could. You know, unfortunately, sometimes it's that way. You know, some pe some people you are better off without. And it's painful, because, but you know what I also realized for myself is that I, I don't always have the same, like, haven't you ever, like, sat with somebody and their perspective of something, like, their recollection of, of something that you were both there at is completely different than yours? And you're, like, thinking, hmm, we were at the same thing. And it just shows you, like, we're all so different in what we... Well, we experience what we say. My hands are so painy. Hey, Lala. Hi, Liz. Hi, Therese. Hugs to you, Mama. Good day to you. Hi, Sandy. Life is too short to be mean, harsh, and I know, hateful and judgmental. I agree with you, Sandy. I totally agree with you. So tell us about your job, Angela. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. So happy for you. Good for you. Happy, happy, happy for you. Happy for you. Hi, Carla. I was just talking about you. I was saying I missed your stream today. And I was looking forward to it because, because we were at the green waste. We were taking all of our all of our mounds and mounds and mounds of green waste. Truckloads of tree trimming. And you guys, my yard's not big, but everything grows. It's crazy. Oh, I hear you. Angela says she doesn't know she's going to take it. It will come with a lot of stress and drama. Oh, girl, I hear you. I hear you, Mama. I totally hear you. I totally hear you. So I can hear some of you, what you're saying, you're like, well, those don't have a lot of color on them. Okay, but I never use them as a whole piece. So I'm going to tear them up and break them apart. But for what I need them for, they're going to work perfect. So, you know, I don't get too stressed if it doesn't come out as a masterpiece. Um, and I'm not trying to cover up all the writing. I'm just trying to create some elements. And so I keep working through mine. I'm like, you know, I just keep adding color. And it doesn't even have to be color that goes well together, just anything. Well, we're happy you're here, Miss Carla. I'm sorry I missed you today. You guys, I cannot figure out how to always chat for my tablet. How many of you guys have that same issue? I can't, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And and I, the same with my phone. It's like sometimes I can chat and other times I can't chat. Do any of you, do any of the other, do any of you have that same issue? Do any of you have that at all? I can't. I'm not. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Hi, Sharon. 
all you lurkers out there say hey. So in the next couple of days, be looking for a video, my, my video that I ha I'll have coming up, and then I'll try to do one on the, the Christmas, or I don't even have to call it Christmas, I'm going to just call it the holiday swap. Hi, Barb! Oh, Sandy, sending you love. Life is too short. Sending you love, Mama, sending you love. You can't chat on your TV sometimes, on the iPad sometimes. I, I can't figure it out because sometimes it works with no glitch list, and then other times I can't do it. So I, I'm like, okay, I just like let it go. I try not to like get too into it. Ash is saying she's it's she's she. She usually uses her Chromebook, but sometimes it's hard to figure out on an iPad. I hear ya. Sandy, we send you love. Nice to see you too, Miss Barb. We're happy to see you. I haven't started my Barb Owen journal yet, but I'm going to. Definitely. How many of you guys were in Barb's stream on Friday? You know, she streams once a month. And if you guys aren't um, subscribed to her channel, go over and subscribe. How to get creative.com, how to get creative with Barb Owen. She has a great channel. Um, she was talking on Friday. She was showing everyone her journals and all the different kinds she has and different things. And the one journal that she has that I don't have, but I'm going to definitely do it, is she has a letter writing journal. And she writes letters to, you write letters to your grandkids, right? She also has a, a journal that she writes to her mom, and her mom has passed. We were all talking about that and how meaningful that is. It's like having a really ongoing conversation. I'm the cheerleader. No, I love you, Barb. You guys, I was not a cheerleader growing up. I was, <laughs> I was in the band. I was, I was in the band. I was not a cheerleader. I was in the band. I was in the marching band. I was a drum major in the marching band. Isn't that ridiculous? Sometimes we get really new people here, and you know, not everyone does live streams. Not everyone does live streams um, on a regular basis, and you do the first Friday of every month. So Barb's saying she does um, a journal, one to her son, one to her mother, and one to her granddaughter. Oh, Barb, it's so beautiful. Hi, Janet. How are you? Hi, Kennedy. Everybody say hi to Baby Kennedy Crafter. And you guys all know that on Wednesdays we have Miss Stacy Evans from Pinko Craft. She does her mixed media mashup. And that is a fun live stream. And for all those that want to just, it's your first time doing mixed media, it's really fun. And she does hers at, guys, what time? It's always different. See, because I live in Hawaii, so my time frame and your time is like different. Um, I think she does it at 7 central. I think it's 7 or 8 central. I'm not 100% sure, but if you go over to um, her channel, which is Pink Poodle Crafts on YouTube, hit the subscribe and, and the little bell next to it, you'll get the notifications. Whereas Miss Barb only does once a month now, she used to do Drama Free Friday, and now she does Drama Free Friday once a month. You're doing them at Kennedy says tomorrow's mixed media mashup is on is on a pumpkin, and it's at 7 p.m. Central. So there you go. Mixed media on a pumpkin. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. And this is a jelly plate for those of you that don't know. It's like a mono printing plate made from gelatin. This is a bought one. I didn't make this, although you can make them. This one's made, they're made from gelatin and alcohol and glycerin. We all are like in your journal. Hi, Sherry. We're all like in your journal cover, Kennedy. Everybody liked it. 
<clears throat> Kennedy completed her first junk journal. Yeah, Kennedy? Is it your first one? And the cover's gorgeous. How many of you guys are as addicted to making junk journals as I am? Guys, and for no reason. Okay, absolutely no reason. I usually collage in most of mine. I can't say all of them. Some of them have photographs, and some of them I write in and collage. Some of them I call them like the all-in-one. How many of you guys have the all-in-one journal? Kennedy said she got a crafty pumpkin. She wasn't keen on getting a new one. Hi, Gypsy. How are you? Hi, Shelly Carlson. We all like your journals. See, Kennedy, everybody's telling you how much they like them. Every, everybody's saying how much we like it. The crafting pumpkins are fun. They are, I'm sure. It's not really a junk journal. It's your first journal. Okay. Well, I haven't seen the inside. So, I haven't seen the inside of your journal yet. How many of you guys have gone to see A Star is Born? It's on my list to do, but I haven't done it. I was going to go this weekend, but I didn't get to. Lala said she's addicted to the idea, but she hasn't made one yet. Yeah, well, get, to get, get started, Lala. <laughs> You're gonna do a video soon? Oh, awesome! You haven't done one yet, Liz? Oh, they are very addictive. So Barb says her main journal is a catch-all. A little art, a little writing, some stuff. Yeah, that, that's how mine is. Mine's an all-in-one. We're happy. We're excited. Journals, journals, and journals, right? And stitching journals. Oh, I know, right? If you guys dare straight, check through, go through my channel, there's ones that I've made out of tea bags. There's ones I've made out of fabric. There's ones I've made out of junk mail. Oh my gosh. You guys, I think I've, I've definitely made my Definitely done my journal, my journal extravaganza. See now, I love the way this. See, my plate is almost coming clean now, and look at all the print pulled off on this. I don't know if you can see it really well, but I like it. Yes, Barb had a bag of journals, so I like. See how a. It looks really great. I mean, you can tell the contrast when you can see it on a regular piece of paper, but I like, I mean, all of it came off. All the paint is coming off, so. <laughs> see, you can see it's getting clearer and clearer, my jelly plate is. I know, right? I'm addicted to painting paper. How many of you guys are addicted to painting paper? Just admit it. And that's, and you don't need to do it for any reason. A lot of times I'll get questions from people and they'll send me like messages like, okay, that was great, but what do you do with it? Whatever you want. There is no rules. No rules to painting papers, no rules to, to any of it. You guys, whatever comes to you, and if you don't know what to do with it, just enjoy the process of making it. And then you can bind it in a journal if you want. <laughs> like me. Bind it in a journal. Bootsy says, John is finishing his first, and it is a memory journal of your trip to Paris. Oh my gosh, that you took several years ago. He saved so many things from the trip, and it's wonderful. And he's hooked. Oh, Bootsy, it get it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> Carla says she is determined to finish her art journal. Carla, which one? You have multiple journals going on at once. Which journal are you determined to finish? I think it's awesome. 
I have so many. So the other day, because most of my stuff is put up somewhere, the other day I was looking for, I was looking for something that I thought I had out, but I don't have it out. I don't know where it is. And um, I found all these projects that are in process. How many of you guys do that? You find all these projects and you're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I have all these projects in process. You've never made a journal, Sherry? Ooh. It is. It's very addictive. Carla says her very first art journal, journal that she liked and worked in on pages. You worked on it today, and I missed today. I'm sorry. I'll have to go back and watch. I was doing my yard work. We were doing our... We were doing our, we were doing our yard work. We were doing some crazy yard work. We were doing yard work today. Today was the, today was, actually, you know why? It's because we had a friend who, said he would uh, he would take us to the green dump that's why <laughs> boxes of projects oh my gosh Barb it's like a, it's like I can't even tell you like I found I, I made this junk journal that I love and I was looking at it and I had been working in it and really enjoying it and then I found um, I have so many projects and then I found one that I was like I was working in and then I guess I got interrupted halfway so it's like the journal itself is finished and you know what I love I like to do most of my inserts as easy twine binding because <coughs> I can figure out finish the signatures and take them out and put them to something else if I want you're having I'm not a big soda drinker but we had root beer and I was like ooh. Carla says she's afraid to count the number of projects here going on. The last time you counted, you got 155. A oh, girl, that way I probably have just as many. Sherry says she made you. You made three journals and it had 75 pages and all of it. Well, it sounds great. You are a mess because of the overloader projects. Ugh. <clears throat> John's going to do the crafting curmudgeon. Oh, that sounds great. It's a great name. <laughs> it did, it did, it, that's a great title for a channel. Yeah, I hear you. You have projects in multiple stages. I get it, Barb. I get it. I mean, but it still makes you feel like a little overwhelmed, yeah? Sometimes you're just like, okay, well, that was good. I had that project, but I didn't finish it. And then now I have, yeah, you can imagine. You know what I find for myself, though? And how many of you do this? How many of you find that you work better when you do multiple projects at once? How many of you find that? I do for myself, like... When I can do multiples at once, I really get it. You have a lot of projects started too, Sandy. Yeah, Gail says that she had lots of projects before she got sick, and then when she regained her health, she didn't go back and finish them. I think we can all relate to that, Gail. I don't think you've cornered the market. It does get overwhelmed to keep it organized. I agree. Gail says she'd get more done if she didn't watch YouTube. I think, are you talking to all of us, Gail? Are you the inner voice talking to us? How many of the rest of you feel that way too? Uh, yeah, I think we get overzealous in our art. Sometimes the creativity, you know, like we want it to be creative and fun, Kennedy, but sometimes we can get ourselves overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, sometimes I think maybe, Matt, tell me pipe in. Tell me if any of you guys get like this. Sometimes watching them, it feels like you've done them. <laughs> I used to watch, um, not on YouTube, but have you ever watched those organizing shows, like where they come in, like a house organizer, and they'll come in and organize your house? And I, the joke was I could watch it and feel like I had organized my house. Even though, of course, watching it, I'm not organizing my house. Malia said she could get more done if she wasn't addicted to gluing. Okay, Malia, I think some of us have that issue too, not just you. You're not the only one that has gluing issues. You have to figure out how to get it how to get it going. Is that again, is that what you said, Barb? I don't know. My sister is not artsy craftsy, so she cannot understand my ridiculousness. So when she came to visit me, she was like, What is all this? Because it looks like crap to her, right? <laughs> and she's very neat and organized. And she was like, you could tell her O C D was coming out. She just wanted to like throw all my stuff away and organize it all. <laughs> Barb, I've had the same reaction. Barb says when she watches a bad episode of Hoarders, then she can get a lot of uh, organizing done. Oh my God, Barb, I've had that same experience. How many of you guys have had that experience? When you watch, a, when you watch an episode of Hoarders, It is hard to get your life back when you when you experience a dis an interruption, but you know what I you know what I have done that. So there used to be an organizing show. Oh my gosh, I don't even know the name of it. But they would come in and they would like take all the stuff out of like two of your rooms, and they would reorganize it. And the guy I think was Australian or British or whatever. I can't remember what channel it was on. I used to love to watch it. I mean. And I watched it, and whenever I watch it, I could get, I could uh, go and get a lot more stuff done in my own house. <laughs> you know what I mean? I watch it and I'll be like, okay, I'm doing it. I had, um, I had an aunt that was a hoarder, you guys, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a disease. It's like, you know, it's a condition. It's not just like something that you can go okay you're hoarding stop hoarding you know and she would anyway whenever I would go over and help her and occasionally like she'd reach out and need help and when she did both my sister and I'd be right there to help because you know it's like you realize it's an illness so we'd be there to help and the minute we'd get home I would throw a bunch of my stuff away is that terrible I get home from helping her and then I'd throw I throw a bunch of my stuff out. You know when you're Barb, I don't think you're heading that way. Do you know what it is? I think I think that you could you would be heading that way if you weren't willing to let it go. But the willingness to let it go, you um you know you're not a hoarder. You know, it's like you're, the willingness to like say, okay, I've had too much. Look, you guys, I've let go of all my, pretty much, I would say 99% of my chipboard. You know, all the chipboard and boxes that I saved. Maybe I have two or three now, two or three box, two or three little boxes to cut up. And <clears throat> I've let go of like, the most recent thing I let go of is I let go of all my work clothes. Sometimes you get jealous of the people on hoarders, the paper people that have on hoarders. Oh no. You got on a rip and you tossed loads of stuff. Well, I recently just like let go of a bunch of stuff because 
for those of you that don't know, I live in the tropics. Have any of you guys ever been to the tropics? Ants have minds of their own in the tropics, okay? So ants, it doesn't matter. Ants decide to move into something, they just do, okay? So they were in my daughter's, my littlest one's room, and they crawl from, they come from outside, and I think they come for the water, and there's all different kinds of ants, okay? <clears throat> so they, they were in my littlest one's room, so when I took, she had this huge, like, um, what do you want to call it? It's not a, it was a bunk bed, but it was like a, more than a bunk bed, it was a, um, you know, it had like shelves and stuff in it. It's like a whole thing. More than a loft bed. It was really cool anyway. So when my friend was coming and I needed to change it because it was only a, a single bed, I needed to change it to a double bed because we were having all this company. So I changed it. And when I changed it all, I found in the back, the back of the bed had this storage space that you can't really get to. It had ants, and they were living in, like, one of her jewelry boxes. Like, they decided they were making a nest in there. I guess it looked like the perfect place to make a nest. So, of course, cleaned the whole thing out. Got rid of the, you know, cleaned out. So, then guess what? Guess where they moved, you guys? Into my closet. They came to my closet. Like, maybe two weeks later, they were back. Now, I don't know if it was the same kind, exact ant. I mean, I'm not up on the, you know, I didn't have a microscope. They were just teeny tiny. So then I was like, what are they in in my closet? Guys, they were in a travel bag. They decided to move into a travel bag that I had that had shoes in it. Like, shoes that, shoes that I would used to wear when I would travel to the East Coast or whatever because it's cold there. So I went through and I got rid of all the shoes. <laughs> I got rid of the bag. And now they're in my bathroom, so it's just like, it's ridiculous. So it's like, it's like, I gotta let it go. I'm irritating here, Barb, because these ones are like so tiny, you can't really see them. You cannot see them. So they're super tiny. So they're, they're ridiculous, but it's all good. They're so tiny, you can't even... You can't even see them. So, it definitely keeps you on your toes here because things can decide to come and move in on you and like no time flat. And you don't even know. You don't even know where they come from. And because I'm not big on pesticides, I can hear one of you guys now, oh, whatever, but I'm not. I just clean it out until they move and eventually they go away. You just like mice more than ants? I don't have any. We don't have any mice, knock on wood. The cat occasionally finds one outside and brings it in, but it's usually dead when she does. Um, I have the same problem. You'll see them crawling right here, Carla. They like my craft stuff. The ants like my craft stuff, and I don't know why either. There's no water or anything. I don't know. The only thing I can figure is the paint and the glue. I guess I just wipe them off. And sometimes I like my coffee maker. How many of you guys have that? Well, <laughs> like all of a sudden all the ants will be like, on, I think it's the water container of your coffee maker, you know? And you're just like, okay, well, I'm clean that out and whatever. And then they go away and then they move somewhere else. Here it's crazy because you can see them like walk up the wall around and there's nothing. You don't even know where they're going to. Well, what can you do? So for me, I am like, I just surrendered into it and let it go. Try not to think too much of it. You, you and ants in your printer? I don't know what they're doing. I, I, you know, I don't know all the things for ants, but you guys, I had this book that I loved and I had refinished it. I'd taken one of those old Reader's Digests and I'd made it like a compartment and I 
made all kinds of pockets and stuff in it and I had it on the shelf I glued fabric on it and I just really loved it I was gonna send it to a friend I was gonna put some made it like a you know like a secret compartment book and I was gonna send it to a friend so I got it down one day because I had some stuff to put in and you guys ants had moved in moved into the book and I was like what is it in the book Cornmeal chases them away? Oh, okay. Hi, Val. Val says boric acid and sugar. Add with water, make paste, put it in a little can or with a lid on it, and I can't remember the amount, but it messaged me. Oh, good. Tell me. Valerie lives in Hawaii, too, so she knows. Hi, Maria. Your balcony is a national highway, France? It's my house. It's a national highway. Lettuce spray vinegar on them. Ooh, making smoothies. Make me one. I want one. You, Angela, Angela says they give, they feed their ants grits. They eat them and they explode. I love grits. I haven't had good grits in a long time. And I know one of you guys is going, where's your XYZ stencils and then my handmade stencils and my handmade stamps? Guys, I didn't throw my storage in it. I couldn't find them. I'm going to have my daughter look for them. She was like, I think you might have to put them in there when you're having your moment. You guys, I have a lot of moments. How many of you guys have a lot of moments where you're just like, you just you get a little overwhelmed and you just clean out stuff? Well, I just, when I knew I was having all that company, I just... Took it all, put it up, took it out. You're fading fast. Good night, Nan. I love you, love you, love you. Hope you sleep well. Speaking of vinegar, you've been craving vinaigrette salad dressing. Woo, sounds good. You can have some good vinaigrette salad dressing, Kennedy. Good night, Trace. We love you. And if you guys haven't gone over to It's Nana's Place, you should check it out. She's doing right now, she's doing a series on, she's doing a series on abandoned books. She's, you know, painting on and collaging on abandoned books. And it's awesome. She, Tracy is the queen of abandoned books right now. She is into it. And it is awesome. We love you, Miss Trace. Hope you have a good night's sleep. Hope you sleep well. I have not been sleeping much. How about you guys? I keep waking thinking. I keep getting up thinking I forgot to do something. How many of you guys have that? Where you wake up and you're like, was I supposed to do something? What was it? Oh, I can't remember. Malia says your your process. Hi, Taz. Your your process is addictive to watch, Trace. I think it's her beautiful voice, Malia. I think it's Tracy's beautiful voice. She's got such a good voice, such a nice voice. And you listen to her and you're just like, it's like hanging out with the best, you're one of your best friends, yeah? You have bad slugs, Sherry? Oh, we don't have that, thank goodness. We don't have that. Or just ants. I have a friend here that has like one of has like a McMansion, you know, like one of those designer homes from like a magazine. And we were over there eating one night, and he was freaking out because <laughs> there were the, these ants, and he didn't know where they were coming from, and they were just like taking over everything. And I said, you know, you just gotta let it go. He says, yeah, but he goes, you don't like. In his world, he couldn't figure out like why they would come in to where to his house. He said, "Oh, you think because your house is perfect in a McMansion that you shouldn't have ants?" <laughs> oh, 
My kids' slugs would be like too much. I will kind of say we haven't had some. I had a whole patch of lettuce in the back and let's just say they came, they found my lettuce. I think the lettuce needs to be like the radar. Um, it must be like the rape. No, there must be like something about about lettuce for for, for them because when I had when I had my pat my lettuce going, I, I had them, but I don't have them now. We have stink bugs too. Those green ones, oof, they're they're stinky. Nice, Sandy, big hug, big hugs to you. Are you off? Are you going outside? Okay. Are you going to use them? If you use my phone, put it in the living room, okay? And, um, I mean, put it in the kitchen and charge it, please. Yep. My little one's going to go outside and play. She's like so cute. Yeah, it says, I know how you feel with ants and roaches living in Hawaii. You know what? <clears throat> Taz, your house can be perfectly clean. The ants just find you. I'm telling you, and there's all different kinds. Some of them are, like, so tiny. They're, like, these invisible ones. And those are the ones that bite. Whew. Seriously, like, sting. They come out of nowhere. And it doesn't matter how clean your house is. They just come. crawl up the wall. They were living in that book I told you on the bookshelf so I, I got rid of that and one time I let go of that book. They were living in my daughter's like little music box thing and I didn't get rid of her music box but I cleaned them out of that and then they were, what else have I had them? Um, hi Deb. Hi Amanda. I've had them in various weird places. They, you would think that they, you would get them in the kitchen, but I don't get them in the kitchen so much. I get them other places, like I don't know, like they were in our hall, crawling up the wall in the hall. We were like, okay, you know. They were, they were, they were in our t uh, behind our television one day. We were like, what is this? Like in places, and, and I definitely always have them in whatever art space. I'm sure you'll see one crawl over here. They're teeny, teeny. You can't sleep, Devo. I'm sorry. Hi, Ann. Oh, we don't have fire ants. Hi, Helen. Everybody say hi to my friend, Helen. My dear friend, Helen, who lives in New York. How are you, Miss Ma'am? How is fall in New York? She lives in one of the most beautiful places. She lives in New York City, but she also lives where I had a house in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York, and it's beautiful there. Just beautiful. The fall colors are just gorgeous. Hey, Sherry. So that is what's going on in my world. The most ridiculous things. But but you guys get the idea. You guys get the complete idea. You get the ridiculousness of me. That is what's going on in my world. So I'm gonna so I'm definitely making these these painting papers are for a project I'm doing and I'm doing some painting papers. I am what else do I have going on? I have painting papers going on. The colors are starting. Oh, that's so beautiful. You had biting ants in your bed? Oh, no, that's not good. And you washed everything and you still had ants. I don't know, you know, I don't know what the deal with ants is, but we get them here all the time. So it doesn't even matter. And sometimes we go for long periods of time when done or and for no reason, and then they come back. So I don't even know why. I don't even think about it anymore. You just let it be. But you will see them crawling on my 
see him crawling. If sometimes you can see him crawling in the video, like look at like one in the paint. I don't know what I was painting not too long ago, and there's like an ant crawling in it. I was like, this is ridiculous. The ant crawling in the paint, so ridiculous. Biting ants though, that I might not. That I might not be good with. The biting ant thing. Mm -mm. You live just east of JFK? Ooh, awesome, Roy. And he went to CUNY? Yep. You're in Melbourne about three hours from, you're in Melbourne about three hours? You're in Brooklyn, Liz? Oh, awesome. Sometimes you think you live under JFK? Well, I used to live on 23rd Street on the east side. I lived, I lived two or three different places. I used to live on West Street between 10th and Charles. And then I had, we lived in a little co-op on 89th between 1st and 2nd. And then right before we moved to New York, I mean, moved to Hawaii, we lived in, on 23rd Street in the east side. Peter Cooper Village. That's where I lived. And then had a house in the Catskills. Isn't that cool? And you guys are getting some pretty fall colors, I bet. You have a subscription to the Joyce Theater? I love the Joyce Theater. Oh, I love New York City. I love living there. You grew up on Long Island, Ann? Oh, awesome. The leaves are falling today because it's about 80 degrees. Oh no. Yeah, my littlest one asked me what an Indian summer was. She said, some lady was talking to her about an Indian summer. <laughs> she was like, she was so cute. She was like, I really don't know what that is. <laughs> I was like, uh, you guys, it's been crazy hot here. I was a half a block from you in New York, Helen. I was on West Street. I was. I left that apartment. They sold it though. They sold the building. It was a great building. I felt like everything in New York, people have relatives and they they want something different and, and they go for it. Helen, have you been to the Carmine Street Playground? That's where that's where um, I used to take um, Skylar when she was little. Carmine Street Playground. Loved it. Just have to keep in mind that none of these pages are going to be kept this way. So I know somebody's going I'm like, "Why are you only doing part of it?" Because it's it's not going to be this way. It's just going to be. Um, it's going to be cut up and used for background pages. What do you go painting paper? You know what I mean to collage pages. What do you guys use your painting papers for? Does anybody, can anybody give their 411 of what they use their painting papers for? Everybody always wants to know. I use mine, I cut them up as collage bits. 
of my heart. But these are for a specific project I'm working on. Night, Roy. Big hugs. You guys go on over and, and check out Booty Sweethearts and check out Roy's channel and check out his quilting. You will enjoy it. It will inspire you. And you can check out his button embellishments, which are awesome. His button tassels. And then hopefully the crafting curmudgeon is going to have his channel soon too. John will have his soon and then you guys can see John's journal. Hopefully you're going to put John's journal up on your channel boots. Can't wait to see it. Big hug, Roy. Hey, Kieran Bot. How are you? Hi, Janet. Everybody say hi to Kieran's mom, Janet. She's visiting from Kansas. Welcome, Janet. We're happy you're hanging out with us. We're happy you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So you know what I found that I didn't finish? How many of you guys did the scavenger hunt book? Guys, I never finished mine. I have it all together. So I may pull it out and, and work on it. And I know I said we would do a scavenger hunt. And maybe I will maybe I will get the list. I have the list that my youngest made for us to do it. Maybe I'll get that out. Janet, everyone's saying hi to you. You guys all post where you're from. Everybody say where you are from. I'm Shelly and I live on the beautiful island of Maui in the Hawaiian Islands. You guys all post where you are from. <laughs> Janet, we are talking to you. Everybody's talking to you. Debbie saying hi. Malia is Sherry. Lala. Miss Aussie Mom. Okay, let's see where every Ati doll is. Angela is. Okay, Angela says she's in Nebraska. Les is in New York. We have Patricia in Iowa. We have Gail in Indiana. We have North Carolina. Minnesota. Malia is in North Carolina. Shelly's in Minnesota. Lori's in Montana. So Karen says her mom's laughing and says she grew up in Michigan, but she moved to Kansas and met her dad. Aw. Lala is in Fort Myers. No, Ann, Ann's in Fort Myers. Oh, wait. Felix in Wisconsin. Debbie is from Detroit and is on, is on in Dorset, the south coast of England. Upstate New York, Kentucky, Florida. Atidal is in Calgary. Oh, Calgary's beautiful. Ann's in Melbourne, Florida. Sherry lives in Birmingham, Alabama. And Valerie lives in on the beautiful island of Oahu. In Hawaii, too. Karen says her mom's an artist and she was in school. She was a school teacher. Oh, how awesome. And she's a director of a Montessori school. Oh, my daughter goes to Montessori. I love it. And Sherry says she's originally from Kansas. But in Federal Way, Washington now. Taz, you're from Maui? But you live in British Columbia? Girl, get back to Maui. Get back to Maui. <laughs> get back to Maui. It's much it's much warmer here. I love Montessori School too. Janet, you sound amazing, Liz says. Charlene is from Oregon. Gail says her grandson goes to Montessori. And Liz is from Mississippi. Hi, Phaedra. Hi, Beth. We were just telling Janet where we're all from. Janet is Karen's mom. Teresa, she's originally from Pennsylvania. You guys go over to Phaedra, Phaedra's channel and see her seed packet journal. It's awesome. Karen says her mom is amazing. Aww. 
Karen says she's showing her, her acrylic pouring. Awesome. And Barb lives in Missouri and Trudy's from Arizona. Beth is from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And Sharon is from New Hampshire. Maria is on here somewhere and she's from Greece. She lives in Greece. And we have a couple people from South Africa that come in and pop in, although I haven't seen them in a while. We love our ladies from South Africa. You love the cold? Oof. Kaz, I cannot live in the cold anymore. I used to live, I live in New York. And that's not even cold. I mean, Minnesota's cold. My sister lived in Minnesota for a little bit. Her husband used to get transferred all the time. Every couple years. And she lived in Minnesota for a while. And I visited visitor there. That is like, that's like, I don't know, lung freeze your lungs up for like, you know, that kind of gas for cold air. Cold. But we'll have to look, we'll have to see a picture of your mom. Karen says go to her channel and you can see her mom. That's awesome. Well, I'll keep you in our thoughts, Liz. The storm's heading toward you. Oh, no. Oh, Phaedra, I love your I love your seed packet journal. It's awesome. Yes, and Marie is from Greece, from Athens. There are no beautiful autumn colors here. It is just sun here. It is just, today was like a, I don't know, maybe it was like 70, 77 degrees and beautiful and sunny. So, I mean, it's awesome. And I'll show you guys some of the painting papers after I'm done. But you can see, like, they start to get really cool. My lighting is not very good in this space. But they start to get really cool dimension to them. And then, you know, you could just, you could also faux paint with them. I just don't have much of my tools in here right now. But they're kind of good to paint. I, I'm, I'm liking them a lot. I'm liking, I'm liking them a lot. I need to get out some more colors, but. What I have them liking. You're in Biloxi? Ooh, I've been to Biloxi. It was cold, 39. Ooh. Somebody sent me a picture the other day. Kennedy, wasn't it snowing where you were? Wasn't it supposed to snow in the Dakotas? Um, somebody sent me a picture that snow in their driveway. I was like, um, I don't think so. I do not think so. Because I don't do snow anymore. I just can't. I cannot physically do snow. What's my base paper? Magazine. This My base paper is <laughs> Restoration Hardware Catalog. Barb, Restoration Hardware. Somebody told me to order them. And I have to tell you, I did. And the quality of them, they're great for painting papers. I ordered them because I thought that I would get some, I thought I would get some good chair pictures, okay? And so far I haven't gotten any good chair pictures, but I have to tell you, they're they're really good for painting papers. If you're gonna use them for collage, I don't know that, you know, have you guys gone over to the Crafting Mama's Facebook group and seen Linda McCollum's painting papers? She does, she paints on magazine pages too. Carla, do you paint on magazine pages? Um, I don't know. I go through phases. I like painting on newspaper a lot too because that's great. I love newspaper for the for the bases of any sort of thing that I'm making. Warm autumn Hawaii weather. <laughs> it's always really the same here. You have one of those? So which one of you guys told me to get the Restoration Harbor catalog? One of you guys told me to. I can't do the snow anymore. I'm not a, I'm not a cold person. You know how like some people like thrive in cold weather? I'm not one of them, okay? 
Definitely not one. But this rest, so I, I decided on this. Okay, so we were talking about all the ridiculous projects that we have. So on one of my ridiculous projects, I need some painting papers to finish it. And I painted some the other day, and I've used a good portion of the ones I painted the other day, but I need more than that. So that's why I'm doing No, I don't think it was, I don't think it was Michelle Ash. It was somebody else. It was like, um, oh, I can't remember. It wasn't Michelle. I would remember if it was Michelle. I mean, she may have recommended it in one of her videos, but there was somebody here. They were telling me, because I was talking about wanting pictures of chairs. And they were like, oh, I just got a restoration hardware catalog and it had chairs in it. Well, I honestly think the Pottery Barn catalog has better chairs. That's just my that's just what I think at the moment okay but the restoration hardware has all these catalogs and you sign up and you can get all of them they have like a child's one an outdoor one they're and they're big and they come with lots of pages like three and four hundred pages and some of them and that is a lot of painted papers and yes you can use regular magazines I do but you know, sometimes the regular magazine ones, like the regular fashion magazine, um, they cut those up for for collage images. How many of you guys do that? So, and one of my favorite painting catalogs to use is the Wine Spectator. How many of you guys have used Wine Spectator? Any of you? Um, Sharon, you do anything you want to with painting papers. I use them all for all kinds of things. I use them for like end papers for my, my junk journals, make envelopes with them, use them for collage pieces, use them for background papers. Um, you can use them to layer with. The cool thing, use them for your ATCs. The cool thing about it is when you use them for stuff like your ATCs, which are artist trading cards, they are not, because if you use like thin pages, you can, you can layer upon them. You know, they don't get really thick and bulky. You guys, I'm going to make some Christmas ornaments out of them. So if you guys want to make a long, make, make some painting papers in the next couple of weeks, we'll do make some Christmas ornaments. Oh, sure you and Liz are going to get together? No, I'm jealous. You guys are all going to be hanging out together. Malia says, we are junk craft it, uh -huh, We are junk crafters or what? We don't care about buying the stuff in the catalogs. We just care about the pictures of things to buy. That's true. Barb saying, Sharon, you can use the papers to create journals, note cards, or anything you can think of. Absolutely. So... I'm going to make some Christmas ornaments in the next, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make them next week or not. I've got to finish a couple of projects that I've got going on. But if you guys want to make some crisp painting paper Christmas ornaments, you need probably five sheets of painting papers. So Liz is saying that she loves the weight and the size of the Wall Street Journal Monthly magazine. Oh, well, then I haven't tried that one. I'll have to get that one, too. See, now I need a Wall Street Journal monthly magazine. Karen's saying you can go to the Dollar Tree and get their makeup packs of plain white tissue paper. You can. That's true. I've made painting papers with tissue paper, too. And these, you guys, I got these from Wish. None of my kids got them for me from Wish. They were like, I think they were five sponges for a dollar in a package, and I asked her if I could have one. You're new to this type of craft? Oh, Sharon, hold on to your pants, girl. You're going to be like out of your mind. You're going to be like, oh, now I can use that for my craft. 
your house, <laughs> you already have, you've collected so much stuff, your house looks like the back room at Goodwill, well then you don't even need to go buy anything, you already have stuff to do it. And look how easy they clean up. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of um, those made in China Alibaba things, because you know what, it just entices me to buy more stuff I don't need, but I have to tell you, these makeup sponges are awesome. They came from Wish. You can keep washing them. Okay, so she like Malia says she likes using. I don't know Gudrun's magazine. Is it really good? So I like the Wine Spectator because it's really big. I like W Magazine. I get that one too. I get um. I don't know. Restoration Hardware is the one that I've recently gotten that I like that it's big. Wine Spectator. I like to use my metallic sprays and stuff on. They make really good. Um. They make really good painting papers. I don't have, hmm, I don't have wine spectator over here, but so these are all base papers. None of them are finished. I mean, I guess I could just tear them up as they are. Um, but these are just some base colors and some stuff that I'm gonna use. And if you guys want to make Christmas ornaments with me, you need. I don't know, probably 10 magazine pages painted on one side. Okay? But I'm not making Christmas ornaments today. But these are for a different project, but if I have any left over, I will use them for my... Yes, that Swedish catalog is good. I like that one. I don't know. I had. You know what? I, Malia, I cut mine up. What was the name of that Swedish one, you guys? One of you guys told me about it. I got it, and I love it. What was the name of it? And it's not big, it's small. So these are some of the painting papers I did today. And then I'll show you some I did last week, which are all different. But I wanted to paint more on some magazine pages. So here's some from last week. Some of these I've already used up, so they're in smaller bits and pieces. But you know, you guys get the idea, right? These are just book pages, so if you've gutted a book, my only thing is make sure it's not racy. I mean, if you don't mind it and it's in your own personal journal, great. But don't feel like me and send other people racy book pages. If I do that, I have been known. And some music paper. And this one is a newspaper, and I like to paint on newspaper. And the sale flyers, they're really nice and thin. They make great background papers. That's the Carla Cage Fish Crazy Lady Circle Stamp. And then music paper that's painted. So I got like my, I got a paint, I got a painting paper extravaganza going on. Autocorrect, what did you write? <laughs> so I highly recommend these. I'm not an affiliate, so I don't get anything. You can buy anything. Sometimes people write me things that, are you an affiliate? No. I'm not an affiliate of anything, you guys. You know. I have these projects that I have to finish, and, and I before somebody gets on me about my diaper, what my baby wipes. Usually I don't have them, but I have some, and I'm using them, and because I can't, I'm not even any near any water. But you know what? I save them. How many of you guys save your baby wipes and use them for stuff? Because I save mine. I save mine and I use them for making all kinds of texture for pages and stuff like that and flowers and different things. Um, recycle websites. Well, you can, if you want magazines, you can go to Free Cycle. You can get free magazines from there. Or no, Recycle Bank. Free Cycle is something different. Recycle Bank. Um, there's lots of things like that. I don't know what you guys, most of you guys live in places where there's creative reuse stores. I don't have that here. How many of you guys have a creative re reuse? You have so many painty baby wipes? I have some too, but I, I make all kinds of cool stuff. I make all kinds of cool stuff with mine. Oh, hi Claire. Everybody say hi to Claire. Claire is from Victoria in Australia. It's the first time you've caught somebody from the U.S. live? Oh, well, welcome. We're happy you're here. 
Malia says she gets rid of most of her stuff through Facebook. You mean like, um, <laughs> Sharon, you keep finding stuff you can't say no to. I get it. You guys know my crazy autocorrect story. I have the worst autocorrect story ever. How, how many of you guys have the have the autocorrect story where, where where you go? Oh my gosh, it's so racy. I can't even like get into it. I have like the racy autocorrect story. Good night, Sherry. Big hug. So Karen says she's in the San Francisco Bay Area and they don't have a creative re reuse. There are lots of D-stash groups on Facebook. <laughs> she, uh, Liz says, I have a box labeled used baby wipes and a friend that came from her office and said, oh my God, you keep used baby wipes. She got the totally the wrong vision. Oh my gosh. Hi, Olga. Oh my gosh. You have one that would be as good as mine. I have the worst. You guys, they, they don't love me autocorrect. Claire, these are the cheapest pants you can get here. These are like 48 cents a bottle. They're not, now I don't know what that, that would be what? 75 cents and in Australia, they're not fancy. These are the ones that you just, they're super cheap. <laughs> Karen has a funny story because she says she has a funny one. Her dad doesn't really do Facebook, but she was explaining that it would be worth having a bare bones account so he could see his kids and other relatives' pictures. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Mine is so racy because I have many racy ones. <laughs> Good night, Malia. We love you. You have to build. You have to build a door tomorrow. Oh, that's crazy. We could come to my house and do some yard work. Okay, so Karen's continuing her story. She said so. She started a sentence with, "I understand." Your aversion, but according to Google, I wasn't understand. <laughs> it said, I understand you're a virgin <laughs> to your dad. Mine is like that too. Okay, Kieran, mine is like that too. Oh, your poor dad. He was like, oh my gosh. Good night, Ash. We love you. Good morning. Good luck, Malia. I'm on your door. Oh my gosh, Karen, we have that. We have we have that. Oh my god. So I had so if you type D stash like in your chat or even on like Facebook, it changes it to deaths. Okay. And I was chatting to this woman and I was saying she had posted in one of the groups she was like that she wanted to trade for some D stash or she had some D stash. And so I said I wrote her a message and I said I don't want to trade, but I'll send you some D stash if you, because there was somebody else in our group that wanted something she had. I said, if you pay it forward, like I'll send you something, but you send what you would send me to this person. But it kept saying deaths. So every single time I te text her, it says, I want some, I want your death. Or it was like, I'll trade you deaths for, it was ridiculous. And she got so offended. She thought I was like, anyway, she reported me to the group owner. It was ridiculous. That's a mild one, but I have some crazy things. Thanks, Claire. Big hugs. You're replacing Melissa. So she's replacing her brace her basement door, and she has to build one because of the size. I hear you, Mama. <clears throat> so, how many of you guys want to stay for the woo woo? The old world market. In the center of Athens is perfect for me. When I come to Athens, I'm going to bring an empty suitcase. You want some of my painting papers, Lala? Okay. Oh, no. Mine is... I told you guys about my friend, right? My friend and the mom. 
anyway, that one was pretty racy. That was that one was very racy. She's like an older woman, and we call a patio here a lanai, spelled L-A-N-A-I. And you know, she wrote "Merry Christmas," old books, and many more. Oh, I'm gonna, Maria, I'm coming. I know the kids are still doing their their. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it would be a little alarming to get de stash threats. Yeah, but you know, let's face it this, Karen. It's like if you if you if you post in there, you must know that if you type in Facebook and it changes your thing to deaths, you know, come on, you pay it's like de stash. It wasn't it's ridiculous. But that happened. Um No, so mine is my racy books, my racy stories were so I have this friend, older woman, much older. And she was a friend of my mom's. And she used to, you know, you guys, I told you guys a story that my mom passed. For those of you that want to do the woo-woo, go grab a glass of water. If you want to have some energized water, I am going to um, grab my coffee, which is right behind me over here. Move my, today I slumped it and had A&W root beer, but I also had a cup of coffee over here. Um, but get your energi get your water if you want to have some energized water for the... And for those that don't know, we do a guided meditation at the end of our um, at the end of our live stream. And you're welcome to stay if you're if you're mildly interested. If you want to receive the energy work, some of the ladies can tell you right here what it's like. You guys can pipe in and say what what the energy work is. So my story is worse. My story is. Um, my story is, so my mom's friend writes, you know, and I try to keep up, you know, my mom's passed away, but I try to keep up with her friends, a few of them, and a few of them have Facebook, and she says, Merry Christmas from the view from my, and she was typing my lovely Lanai, but it changed the word Lanai to labia. She almost died. She didn't even know it. She had like 200 comments. And <laughs> she had 200 comments, and then she was like, what do I do? She, and, and I called her, and, oh, you guys, look. One of my friends sent me this, triple thick. I was, I was talking to her the other day, said, I have to order some. And she ordered some for me. It wasn't that sweet. I wasn't, a, I wasn't asking for her to. But if you haven't used this, this is a great, if you like to make embellishments, and you like them to have, like, a glossy look on them. So she's like, my mom's friend's in her 80s. So she was like, <laughs> she wrote, um, Merry Christmas from my lovely labia. Or Facebook changed it. And she was mortified. And I said, I'll leave it up. I said, if you can't say, if you can't use the word labia at your age, when can you? <laughs> I know, right? Ridiculous, right? She was mortified. She was like, how do I change it? And then somebody sent me this. So I was in Stacy's live stream. Whoever is sending me these lovely presents, thank you so much. So this one came in the mail today, too, with no card. Now, I, I think this one came from my friend in New York. As I was talking to her, we were talking about what craft supplies we were going to buy. And I said, uh, one thing on my crafty wish list is some triple thick. It, I have some, but it's just some to the bottom of the bottom of the uh, jar. And this is, like, really good. It works like glossy accents or, like, um... Uh, diamond glaze it's it's a it's a cool thing I, not pricey but i was in stacy pink pool crafters live stream and i said oh she was using this book to make something really cool and i said oh i want that book and one of you guys sent this to me so thank you guys so much this is an atc book she was making these she was making these mosaics from this shake rattle and roll book so I'll definitely have to make something from it. So thank you. And nobody's ever fessed up to whoever sent me my amazing brushes. And I'm going to use those. I'm going to use them when I get my watercolor paper out. I am definitely going to go to storage this week and get my watercolor paper. So whoever sent me these brushes, thank you so much. I'm excited to use them. And thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate it more than you know. So for this... <laughs> okay, so wait, I'm missing it. Okay, one of her fellow doll makers also creates patterns. And she's just placing an ad online that went out to several thousands of people. Okay. You pull 
pulled out your beauty blender. Oh, right. This is like awesome, right? These are good. So the guy in charge of the listing didn't catch the autocorrect. He saw it bleeped off the screen and her name was Uta Vasina. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Use your imagination. Oh, I, I get it. Oh my God. Oh my God, thousands of people. Oh. Oh my God, Barb, poor Ute. I bet she's like mortified. I do have an admirer and you know, first of all, I don't ever want you guys to ever feel you have to send me anything. I appreciate you hanging out with me or my company and I, it's my joy to be here with all of you and to make my ridiculous painting papers and whatever else I do. But I'm very grateful, and thank you to whoever is sending me those things. I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna, I'm excited to use the brushes. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use them. I want to use them on because you brush, you, you spritz them with heavy duty water, and I don't want to do it on these thin magazine pages because it'll just wrinkle. I'm gonna use them on some water, watercolor paper. He was mortified. Uta thought it was funny. Well, thankfully she had a good. Oh, bye, Claire. Big hugs. Yeah, come back anytime. We stream Tuesdays and Fridays. And I appreciate a thumbs up. If you guys, before you head out, give me a thumbs up. Barb, that's hilarious. Good night, Anne. Oh, you have a PSAT tomorrow? Ooh, we'll be sending you some good woo-woo. She does have a good sense of humor. No, I can't. With that name, it can't. It cannot be the first time for Uta. Cheers to you, Claire. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, you guys, if you want to hang out again, just make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. I would tell you that most of the time you get the notifications, but you may not. And um, I don't know what I'm making on Friday. If I finish this project, I'll, I'll, I'll make it with you guys, but I have to finish it. Good night, Amanda. Big hugs. Thanks for hanging out with us. So for those of you that want to stay, we're going to do a guided meditation. And all you need to do, get yourself some water and... Um, if you've ever experienced something like Reiki, it's kind of like that. It's not exactly, but it's just an energy work. And it gives you an opportunity. What I do is it, hmm, how do I put it? So we each, it's all of our divine right and all of our um, birthright to be connected to our highest, most divine self. Some people call it your higher self, some people call it divinity, some people call it your God self, some people call it your, um, I, I don't know. Your, but it's all of our divine right to have that ultimate divine connection with our higher self, with the source of all creation all the time, because we are that, right? So the, the kind of meditation and what I do, and this is what I do for a living. I don't make painting papers for a living, obviously, you guys. <laughs> I come here. This is my hangout. This is my joy. Um, what I do is, or my gift, we all have our own gifts and we all have our own divine blueprint and each and every one of us is here to live out that. And I don't know what yours is, just like it took me forever to figure out what mine is. And it, it's always changing and ever evolving. So what I do in this med guided meditation, because some people have asked me, like, what is it exactly? So all I do is I clear a space, I open, I hold a space of clear energy, clear light energy, so that you can get into alignment with yourself. And then you're going to say, okay, well, how does that work? Okay, so have you ever walked into a room and there's somebody super joyful and super, super, um, like, uh, excited and available and everybody's attracted to them and you just feel better being around them and you don't necessarily know what they do? It's kind of like that. All right. So somebody asked me, how did I come to this experience? Um, I, I've had it for as young as I can ever remember. I mean, you know, I've, but like everyone else, get caught up in my life and get caught up in the day to day, whatever, and get distracted and sometimes don't remember, just like all of us. So all I do when we do this meditation is I invite you just to hold the space for yourself with the possibilities of what you want in your life, whatever that is for you. And I don't know what it is, only you know. 
What your divine blueprint is and what you're here to do, only your higher self and divinity knows, not me. So all I do is I open that space in myself and I sit in that space and I invite you to receive and release. And you can only receive good things. So when you, when you breathe in the good, you breathe, breathe in love, bliss, joy, freedom, right? And when you release, you're releasing patterns and things that don't work for you. And I don't know what those are. Only you do. And you don't even need to know what they are. You just know that it doesn't work. And sometimes it could just be a bad mood. Or sometimes it could just be, um, I don't know, aches and pains in your body. Or thought processes that aren't working for you. Or deep grief and anger. Um, deep sorrow. Deep. And I say deep because many times we don't even know that we're holding on to it. And so I'm inviting all of you, and for those of you that want are just mildly curious but don't really want to receive the energy work, just say no. It only works with conscious consent. Now you can include other people in your energy work, but just like in saying prayers, it's up to their higher self to receive. It is not up to us, right? So we each have our own conscious, divine, consent to everything that we receive in our lives. So if you're just molly curious and you want to hang out but you don't want to receive the energy work, just say no, I don't want to receive the energy work. You will, however, because we are all connected, we'll feel better. That's just how it works. And I probably said too much and I usually don't say all that but I don't even know why I am but I'm telling you because people write me questions all the time. But why not what? You call it soul connection? There you go. That's awesome. Good night, Karen. Big love to you. And give your mom love, too. Hi, Lynn. You got here Got here in time to the, for the woo-woo. Yes, exuberant, effervescent. You're right, Karen. All those things. Yep. You know, you know how, like, sometimes you feel like you're in the flow? Hey, Sherry. Hey, you feel like you're in the flow and things are just working out for you, right? That's all, that's when you can really tell that you're connected to your higher purpose, right? You know, you just like you go out and everything just falls into place. And then sometimes you're not. Like you're when things are not falling into place for you, it's like you're up. So Gail says that she's a Buddhist, and that's the major part of their beliefs, is that we're all connected to everything else. Yes, absolutely. So the cool thing, Gail, just like in Buddhism, as you raise your vibration, your vibration, your personal energy light, your personal light, as your light becomes brighter and brighter and brighter, through osmosis, everyone else's does too. That's just how it works. What did you say, Lynn? You got your nose stuck in the paint. You're so bad, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn painted with her nose last time. Okay. We love you. Lynn says, hi, Phaedra. She's using some tissue that you sent me in a project. So right now, we can all, I, I'm speaking for myself. Right now. I can use a bit of a boost. I can use a bit of a boost of, you know, feeling in a better space, feeling more connected to myself, feeling more connected to the earth, feeling more connected to all of you. And I can already hear somebody saying, well, if you do this, why isn't your life perfect? You guys, this, is, this life is a journey. It's not an end result. Everything ebbs and flows. We're here, or this great, vast spiritual beings having a human experience. All energy sacred. I agree with you, Lala. All energy sacred. So <clears throat> I invite you to bring in anyone you think could use a boost. We all know somebody in our life that could use a little love. So I invite you to bring them in. I also invite you to bring in and invite in your home because the energy that you live in in your home, it affects that too, right? If, you're, if the energy in your home is good, you always feel better. So get your glass of water if you want to participate. And if you just want to hang out, you can do that too. So all you need to do to participate is inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. That's it. 
You can do this energy work with your eyes open or your eyes closed, seated or lying down. There is no rules. It is your divine self. And you, oh, your higher self always knows better than anybody else. So bring in, invite in you to bring anybody that you'd like. And you can also bring situations. Maybe you have something going on at work. Maybe you have uh, some health things. Just anything. You can bring them to mind. You only have to think about them once. <laughs> Liz, Liz, Liz says, I was washing my face and heard Shelly say, Lynn got her nose stuck in the paint. I laughed out loud and, and snarfled up her nose full of water. I'm sorry. Barb says, for those interested, there is a meditation app called Unplug. You can try it for a week for free. All kinds of meditations, and I love the one that's called Sound Bath. Awesome. I think it's great. You guys, anytime you can just be with yourself for a little bit, for me, I mean, I work on myself all day long. All day, every day. <laughs> Lynn says, Liz, that will work with watercolors. Okay, just letting you know. She's letting you know. All right, and the meditation lasts about 10 minutes, you guys. It's not very long. It's not very, it's not very long. All right. Everybody inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Receive and release. Receive and release. Imagine yourself in a column of light. And when you look up, you can't see the end. And when you look down, you can't see the end. This is your column of light. It is unique to your being, soul, spirit. Allow your column of light to enter deep into the heart of the earth. Give your column of light big roots like tree roots to anchor itself deep in the heart of the earth. Let's ask the earth to bless us with our energy. I see this like beautiful golden light that you can see it or feel it or think it or just know it any way that works for you. Some feel it like a warm sensation. Feel this beautiful golden light energy rising up through your column, through your roots, and filling your feet and ankles, calves and knees, thighs and hips. Filling the base of your spine, your lower abdomen, your waist, your heart, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your neck and throat, your face and head, and feel it fountaining out the top of your head as high as you can imagine. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to the earth. Let's focus on your column of light above your head. Follow your column of light and give it the suggestion, heart of creator creation energy, heart of the cosmos, heart of the central sun. And with that, your column of light is right there in this beautiful angelic realm. Give your column of light big roots the same way you did deep in the earth. Give your column of light beautiful roots deep in the heart of creator creation energy above your head. Let's ask this beautiful center of energy to share with us. Creator creation, heart of the central sun, divine source energy. I see this energy like beautiful silvery diamonds, but you can see it. Feel it, think it, or just know it any way that works for you. Some people feel it like a cool sensation. 
feel this beautiful, heavenly, cosmic theater creation, part of the central sun energy, pouring through your column of light, mixing with your beautiful gold earth energy and your energy and spreading six feet in all directions. Feel it filling your head and face, your throat and neck, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your chest and back, your waist, your lower abdomen, the base of your spine, and feel it pouring through your hips, thighs, knees, calves, and ankles, and out the bottom of your feet, expelling any and all exhales deep into the heart of the earth. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to heaven and earth. Now I'd like you to focus on the roots where your energy is meeting in the heart of the earth. On the inhale, I want you to ask the pieces and the parts of you that your energy that you've given away or allowed to leave for whatever reason, allow it to return to you here. And on the exhale, I want you to let go of anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive yourself fully and completely, focusing deep in the heart of the earth where you meet there. Ready? Receive in love. And let go of anything else. Receive and release. Receive and release. Receive and release. Let's focus six feet below your feet. Call the pieces and the parts of you back into your body now. Call your energy that you've given away or you've allowed to leave for whatever reason. And on the exhale, release anything that no longer serves you. Ready? Receive yourself fully and completely. Focusing six feet below your feet. Ready? Receive yourself back in. And let go of anything else. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Focus one foot below your body personality. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. Receive. Release. Receive. Release. Receive, release. Let's focus on the energy center at the base of your spine. Allow yourself to receive the pieces and the parts of you that you've given away or let go of for whatever reason. And on the exhale, I'd like you to see yourself sending back any energy that isn't yours, sending it. Return to sender. Ready? Receive yourself back in, focusing on the base of your spine. And pull out anything else, send it, return to sender. Receive yourself back in. 
physically see yourself pulling like electrical cords or something plugged into you back to where it should go. Ready? Send it back. Like a retractable plug. Ready? Breathe yourself back in and pull out the plug and send it back to any energy that's not yours. Four more time. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center located at the base of your spine. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. And let go of anything that isn't yours. Let's focus on your lower abdomen. Breathe yourself fully and completely. Invite yourself back in. Any energy you've given away, anytime anyone's taken your energy. And on the exhale, I want you to send back, mentally see like strings. And I want you to pull them all out and see them return back to where they came. Ready? Receive yourself back in. Pull out all those strings, send them back. Receive yourself back in. Release anything else. Receive yourself back in. And release anything else. Focus on your waist. Breathe yourself completely, fully and completely. Invite yourself back in. Call your energy back into this energy center now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Physically pull out those strings. They automatically return to wherever they came from. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Pull out all those strings. Breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. One more time, focusing on your waist. Receive yourself fully and completely back in. And any energy that's not yours, see it, pull those strings out, and they're automatically like retractable cords back to where they came, magnetically gone back to where they came from. Ready? Breathe yourself back in and pull out anything else. Let's focus on your heart. Open a window here in your heart and allow anything that's not you to leave, right? Pulling it all out. Breathe yourself. Call yourself back in. Anytime you've given your energy away or someone's taken your energy, you're breathing it back into your body personality, focusing on your heart. And on the exhale, you're pulling out any of these strings, any of these attachments that don't belong to you. Ready? And sending them right back to the source in which they came. Ready? Breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Release anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Release anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Release anything else. Focus on your throat. Breathe yourself fully and completely back in. All the time that you felt stifled, you couldn't speak your mind, you couldn't say your piece, you couldn't say what you needed to. You're breathing all of that back in and all the times you've said things you wish you didn't. Breathe those back in. They only return as love. And on the exhale, pull out anything 
See if you feel these strings, these cords in your throat, pull them out. They return to center. Ready? Receive yourself back in. Let go of anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Release anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Release anything else. Let's focus on the point of light between your eyes and the center of your forehead. Breathe yourself fully and completely back in here now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Let go of anything else. Breathe yourself back in. Let go of anything else. One more time. Breathe yourself back in. Let go of anything else. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center. And let go of anything else. Focus on the top of your head. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Receive in love. Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. Focus one foot above your head. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your awareness here now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Six feet above your head, breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Let's focus on the point of light where you connect to the heart of creation. The heart of the central sun. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into this energy center. Now ready? Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. I want you to put one hand on your heart and one hand on your water. Let me know when you feel this.
Check your roots. Make sure they're deep in the earth. I want you to put your hands out, receive, and I want you to send it out to a place that you feel could use use it. You can pick any place on the earth. You obviously include, include your home, your friends, anyone that can use a little boost. Ready? Receive and give. Include your pets. I want you to take an inventory of your body, any aches and pains you have, any other places where you feel there's these corded energies, these energy blocks in your body. Make sure your roots are deep in the earth and deep in the heavens. Ready? Receive and give. Pull out all that stagnant energy. Let it go. It magnetically goes right to the center of the sun. Ready? Breathe in. Receive and let it go. Remember, receive easily, effortlessly, and enjoyably. I want you to imagine an infinity symbol. See it starting in the heart of heaven, crossing through your heart, entering deep into the heart of the earth, crossing back through your heart, and ending where it began in the heart of creator, creation, energy, in the heart of the central sun. On the inhale, receive love from the divine, from the central sun and the heart of the earth. And on the exhale, give love back to the divine and to the heart of the earth. Ready? Receive in love and give in love. Receive and give. Receive and give. One more time. Receive and give. And when you feel ready, open your eyes and come back. Please feel free to share anything that you'd like. I saw your note, Sherry. I included your granddaughter. Please feel free to share anything. Good night, Kale. Big hugs.
please feel free to share. You know, I think sometimes we, and you may not have anything to share and that's fine. You know, that's all good. But if you do, share it because a lot of, and know that the chat doesn't stay up so nobody's going to see it. But a lot of times we're all experiencing something and sometimes we go, oh, this is what I felt. And somebody goes, oh, good. I'm glad it wasn't just me. <laughs> okay, I'm liking these. But now I get to do my next layer. Good job, Angela. You're letting yourself be open. You're welcome, Auntie Doll. Oh, good night, Pedro. Love you, girl. Oh, no, Lynn. Sending you love, Mama. Feel a lot of warmth, so good. Good job. Oh, that's so good, Lala. Yes, it does make sense. Totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Well, we're all in this together, girls, and we're carrying the light. And, you know, it's so important that we shine our light as often as we can. Oh, you're so sweet, Angela. I'm so glad that it's working for you. You know, we're the light, girls. We're the light. You know? Oh, send in prayers, Barb. Send in prayers, Lynn. I love you, Lynn. I love you, girls. I love you a lot. You know, for me, lately, um, as I'm, like, sort of feel like some days I'm walking through quicksand in my life, like, you know how you have goals and stuff and you just can't get get them done? You know, you feel like, you feel like ah, you know. I can just focus on this light and focus on this energy and feel better, even though I may not get everything I need to get done. I lead it in the, oh, you're so cute. I love you, Sherry. I love you, girls. I love you. And, you know, you, you can do it no matter what. You are the light, girls. You are the light. And you are guiding the way. You're guiding it, girls. None of us know what we're here to do. Call in, if you want to know what your divine blueprint is, ask for it. Before you go to sleep at night, say, give me an inkling. Give me a, give me a. Oh, and we we're all like that. Don't worry about it. It's like, you know, we all have it, you know. Oh, thanks, all the big hugs. You know what, girls? None of us know what we're what what the whole picture is, right? And so we each get the opportunity to Oh, sure, Charlene, that's so awesome. You know, that happens. The more you do it, the more it stays with you. And the more that you can just call on it, you can breathe yourself back in. 
we are rising above and we have to and we have to keep our head up and we have to keep going in a positive way girls we are it we are the light and you just got to be it and whatever you do painting papers or whatever or whatever you're finding yourself doing quantum physics is right lynn you're absolutely right we are rising above it and we're also having the butterfly effect so as we like okay so you know there were like there's like there was like 36 of us doing the meditation all at one time i don't know how many people came in and out but 36 people is huge because it multiplies by the number so it would be like 36 times 30 so if 20 of us are doing it it would be like 20 times 20 it would be like 400 the energy of 400 so it, it makes a difference it makes a difference and you know what all you can do is just call on this beautiful clear light just you gotta make sure your roots are in the ground though you gotta get your roots on the heart of the earth and get your roots up in into the cosmic heavenly realm imagine that central sun and your roots up there see the gold energy coming up and the silver energy coming down you know and then you're the white light in between you're the white light that's surrounding it and allow yourself to just call in this beautiful clear light so i call in this, i call in the clear light i call in the clear light and just call it in clear, pure, crystal clear light. You know. So, Lola, I say do anything that works for you. I say do anything that works for you. Because I meditate every day. I meditate this morning. I was up at, I can't even tell you what time this morning I was up. It was like probably 5.30. I probably meditated for an hour and a half this morning. In my own like space of just like being and basking in that light. And then got up and did my life. And you know, then, <laughs> you know, did rake my yard and did the whole stuff and whatever. And came and painted papers with you guys. You know we're all here with lessons to learn and i don't know what your lessons are and you know you can ask for the insight to what your lessons are but I always ask that you learn them easily effortlessly and enjoyably you've been doing creativity well-being summit oh that sounds awesome Yes, God about a light, I agree with you. There's a meditation somebody did recently and I get I'll have to find it and then look it up. It it's it goes something like this. I am the light, I love the light, I live in the light, I play, I am I am the light, I live in the light, I love the light, I bless the light. It's a beautiful reminder. Yeah, well, it's so so true. I don't know her, Angela. I'll have to look her up. I hear you, Lynn. Lola Sherry's asking to find the workbooks that you're mentioning. So maybe you can share it with her or, you know, share it, share it, share it, how you get it there.
We miss baby Kennedy. We love you, girl. You know, it's hard because sometimes I think we don't know what our purpose is and we get caught up in all kinds of ridiculousness, you know. And it's good when you can find, when you can figure it out. Where you get little inklings of it. You guys, I have the tiniest baby. I have a tiny baby gecko. I can't even get him over here for you guys to see him. He's probably like an inch long. Maybe he's, maybe he's an inch and a half. And he, he like, I guess because I have a light over here and I guess there's a fly or something. He's like, he's like, I think I'm going to get it. Now he's trying to get on the tripod of my camera. You guys have laughed so hard. It's ridiculous. So great. <laughs> Between the ants, maybe he's come to eat the ants. <laughs> Barb says she tries to look at it from the 440th floor, and that helps, and that is good. I'm not going to mail you. I'm not going to mail him to you. You guys, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. Lately, it's like between my yard exploding and then the mass of baby geckos. <laughs> Your cousin mailed you seahorses? Oh, no. Well, my lovelies, I will see you again on Friday. Um, in between now and then, okay, let's see. Tomorrow night, mixed media mashup with Pink Little Crafters, which is Stacy. Head on over to her channel. Thursday night is Elizabeth Brewer, Scrap and Lizzie, um, and she, I don't know what she's doing. And um, I'll be back on Friday. There's also Maridel Abrams. You guys check her out, the Mary Atier. Bye, Barb. We love you. The Mary Atier. She's doing some mornings with Mary really early in the morning. And there is Friday night. If you belong to Stacy's Patreon group, there is um, a Friday night after mine, or maybe it comes on during mine, um, her Patreon live stream. And somewhere in the mix is Jennifer Rapp. Jessica Rapp, sorry. Jessica Rapp, Two Silver Oranges. I know she comes on Sundays, and I think she's doing, she may do Wednesdays as well. And I'm sure there's lots of others that I'm missing, but that just gives you guys uh, a little bit of, of who to hang out with. There's always somebody good to come and hang out and art with. And thanks for being here. Know that I always love you, and from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha. Go over and join our Facebook group if you feel like it. We'd love to have you. And we're sending you a lot of love. All right, girls. See you Friday. Aloha.